Once the car has been secured, we can begin working on repairing the damaged surface. This is a small dent which needs to be filled out. Before we start, we must thoroughly wash and degrease the hood under repair. At this point, it is necessary to use silicone remover, which will remove all impurities arising from normal car usage. We should remember to use personal protective equipment throughout the entire repair process. It's time for sanding. The mechanical working of the surface is done using a grinder with a vacuum. Additionally, a grinding wafer can be used to manually clean the repaired area so that no impurities are left. At this point, most of the errors made involve using too high a gradation of sanding paper, as the scratches cause very deep damage to the varnish coating, which cause coating defects like deep set scratches. The next stage in the repairs is filling in the dent with putty. Troton suggests using the surface micro glass fiber putty with fiberglass. When mixing the putty, the most important thing to remember is choosing the right proportions of hardener to putty, depending on the surrounding temperature. The surface putty black with carbon fiber can also be used for bondoing. During bondoing, you should take note of the thickness of the applied putty so that it does not exceed 1.5 millimeters. Thicker layers may cause that those areas where the most putty was applied do not dry. Hardening and drying the putty lasts about 15 minutes. The best effects are achieved by using IR radiation. Now it is time for sanding and a thorough cleaning of the area under repair. Once again we use putty, though this time we apply filling putty. Filling putty should be applied in thin layers. Each layer should be no more than one and a half millimeters thick. After applying the putty, the surface under repair is dried for about 15 minutes, then re-dried using IR radiation, polished and cleaned using compressed air. An area which is under repair should be well prepared so that there are no holes or irregularities on the surface undergoing bondoing. These holes may hold an air which will cause little bubbles to form during drying, for example when using IR radiation. These bubbles will cause varnish defects in the form of depressions or dents. It is time to prepare the area for applying a base coat. The surface should be secured using reactive primers and then a base coat is applied. The reactive primer must be activated before being applied. The process of applying a base coat to the surface may be initiated after it has been secured with a reactive primer.
At this stage, the hood has already been painted with a base varnish. By applying a clear coat surface varnish, we will achieve the desired sheen of the coating. Special attention should be paid to the varnishing technique. The hand must be steady and held at the distance and using the amount of pressure suggested by the manufacturer of the varnishing gun. After varnishing, the surface should be checked for any accidental impurities. After 15 minutes, the varnish will have evaporated and the drying process can be initiated. The varnish is hardened at a temperature of about 50 to 60 degrees for about half an hour. Next, the car should be set aside for about five hours. At this point, the varnish achieves adequate hardness. The car is finally ready. The use of modern materials and tools has allowed the period of time needed for repairs to be shortened to barely a few hours.